So we'll create that now. This will be a void check direction. It'll take in a potion, we'll call that pot. We'll take a vector to int, and that'll be the direction that we're moving in. We'll take a list of type potion, and that's gonna be the connected potion. So we wanna pass in the existing list to make sure we know what's currently already connected. And this is again gonna take in the potion type because we need to know what potion we've got. So we'll say pot.potion type. So now we need to check the neighboring potions. And the way that we're gonna do that is by using the Y index and then adding the direction that we've moved in to basically iterate over the next potion. So we'll say int x equals pot x index plus the direction that we're moving in, Ooh, x, and then int y will do the same thing. So y index plus direction dot y. And now if you were moving just one up, x would be zero, so this would do nothing and y would be one, so you would move one up on your y index. And if you were moving to the right, x would be one, y would be zero, so you'll always only ever be moving one up or one left. You could do a diagonal check as well if you wanted to by adding the direction of one, one, which would make it, you know, top right. And you could play with that if you wanted to do diagonal matches. We're not gonna do diagonal matches in this because we're just making a relatively basic game, but it's very, very easy to add it in if you wanted to. So for starters, we wanna make sure we're at least within the boundaries. So check that we're within the boundaries of the board. And we do that by saying while X is greater than or equal to zero and X is less than the width and Y is greater than or equal to zero and Y is less than the, the height then that means we're inside of our board. And now that we've moved to the next potion, let's make sure that that potion node is still usable. So we'll say potion board x, y dot is usable. And if that space is usable, then let's get a reference to the potion that is in that space. So we'll call that neighbor potion. And it will be equal to basically a reference to the potion on that place in the board. So we'll say potion board x, y dot potion dot get component of type potion. And now we've got a reference to that potion. And remember, this is not your normal x, y that you're currently at. This is the adjusted x, y for the direction that you're moving in. So the way that we check for matches is does our potion type match? And there's also an extra thing that we wanna add in here is that we wanna make sure that it's not already matched because we don't wanna be creating duplicate matches. So it must also not be matched. So we'll say if our neighbor potion is not matched and our neighbor potion dot potion type is equal to the potion type that we created up here. So that's a reference to our potions potion type. Basically, do I have a red potion and is the neighboring potion a red potion? Well, if that's the case, then we've found a connected potion. So connected potions dot add the potion that I've got. So that's my neighbor potion. And then we're going to move to the next location. So if I've done, you know, Let's say I'm moving to the right and I'm at X zero and I move to X one and I've found a match. So I've got two red potions. I now want to check if further to the right of that potion is also a red potion. Cause if we do then have a red potion, then we've got a three match. And I would then also check, do I have a fourth match? And if I do have a fourth match, then obviously you've got, you know, a long potion match. So we'll say X plus equals direction dot X and y plus equals direction dot y. And the reason why we do this this way is so that it's flexible enough that regardless of the direction we give it, it will keep moving in that direction. So if I'm going up and I find a match, I will find another up match. If I'm going down, I'll move down again, right, I'll move right again, and so on. And if I don't have that, so if for whatever reason I have a matched potion or the potion type doesn't match, then I can just break because we want to move out of this while loop. And then also if our potion board is not usable, we're not going to have a blank space and then another match. So we should also break here. So we'll say else break there as well. And so that will safely break us out of the loop where we don't have a potion that's matchable and where we also don't have a matched potion. And now we don't need to return anything out of this method. And the reason why is because we're passing in the connected potions and we're just adding to the connected potions as we go. And so all we're gonna say in here now is check direction. We're gonna pass in the potion and we're gonna give it the direction we wanna go, which is gonna be a vector to int. So new vector to int. And we're gonna give it one zero. And then we need to give it the connected potions, which will just be our connected potions. 
And now this is the exact same method that we're going to use to do checking left, which is just going to be a minus one. Then we'll do checking up, which is going to be a one on the y-axis and a zero on the x-axis, and then checking down, which will just be a minus one. So that saves us writing this everywhere, all over the place inside of this method, because it's just going to become extremely messy. You're going to get a bit lost in here. And it's quite nice to so keep it much cleaner. So now let's check for our three match. So if connected potions dot count is exactly three, then that means we have a horizontal normal match. So it will say debug dot log, and I'll just put in a notification there. So I have a normal horizontal match. The color of my match is, and then we'll just say connected potions. And we can just take, remember this is a list, so we'll take the first potion out of here and then we'll say potion type. And because obviously this is only ever gonna be the same potion type, it doesn't matter if we return one or two in here, it'll all be the same. And then we're gonna return a new match result because remember this returns a match result. And that match result is gonna be connected potions equals the connected potions that we have. And the direction is equal to match direction dot horizontal. And I'm getting an error here, and the reason why I'm getting an error here is just because these are all private variables. So I will just make these public real quick. And that gets rid of my problem. Now this is actually almost the exact same logic for our vertical match. So I'm gonna just copy and paste that there. I'm gonna call this a vertical match. And our connected potion will still be connected potion. And We'll say that that is dot vertical. And then we'll do our more than three. So else if connected potions dot count is greater than three, that means we've got at least four or more. And it would only be possible to have four in this case because otherwise it would be a different match elsewhere. So we'll have the same message here and the same return. So I have a long horizontal match and I'm going to call that long horizontal and we'll do almost the exact same for our long vertical match vertical and long vertical now that we have this set up we just have to do this initial cleanup here again so we're going to say connected potions dot clear. And the reason why we're doing this clear here is because we don't want to have any of these crossover when we're doing our vertical matches. So let's say I had one red potion, another red potion, but not a third one. I want to make sure I clear that out from my horizontal match so that I don't count those two potions towards a vertical match. And then we want to say connected potions dot add, and then our initial potion that we have at the very, very start. So that's the one that we're actually looking at. And if all of this happens and we still haven't got a match, then we'll add an else to this and it will just be a return new match result. And we'll say, we'll still return the connected potions because it's just easy to return them. Uh, but we'll return a direction of match direction dot none. So we have no match basically. And that's the full logic that we need here. It's, it's quite nice when we have this helper method set up correctly, because it really means that we're just calling this same thing and then we're just returning the same result irrespective in here. And we could make this look very, very confusing, but keeping it nice and simple and just knowing that we're repeating the same logic everywhere. So we don't run into a trap where we have a typo on our vertical match and you get very weird outcomes and you don't know that it's only the vertical match that's failed. Because of the way we're doing this here, we've just kept it clean and the exact same logic is used to do every type of match. So now if I scroll up to our checkboard, we've got in here potential matches now. And we also know the direction they would be matched in if they were a match. So first let's just make sure we actually do have a match. So we'll say if, matched potions and we want to get the connected potions out of there dot count is greater than or equal to three then we would do complex matching that's going to come later that'll be doing cross matching to make sure or to check for supers basically but for now we would add potions to remove so we would add the potions that we have inside of our matched potions dot connected potions. So we take in the potions here and we're passing them to be removed later on. 
And then we just want to mark each potion as match because remember at this point we've only identified the potions in this individual match, but we want to make sure that they don't get matched again. So we want to say for each potion pot in matched potions dot connected potions pot dot is matched equals true. And then outside of that, we would also return a has matched equal to true as well. So we would also know that overall we have a match inside of here. And now down here, instead of returning false, we'll return has matched. So if has matched hasn't been set to true by this process, it will return false because it defaults to false here. And if it has been matched, it will return true here. And now the last thing we actually have to do is call checkboard in our initialize board. So we want to make sure that checkboard is actually running at the very start. So we'll say checkboard. And it does return a true false, but we aren't worried about that at this point here. We'll just run it for now. And then we'll add in a check to make sure Actually, what we'll do is we'll say that if we do have board matches, we'll rerun the board to until we don't have matches. So for now, let's just make sure it works. So if I hit play, we are checking the board and we have a normal vertical match of white potions. So I can see that here. And let's just quickly run our eyes over and make sure we don't have any other types of matches going on here. Doesn't look like we do. So that looks like it's worked correctly. We'll stop it and start it again. And this time we have both a white and a blue and we should get a long horizontal match for this blue and a normal vertical match for this white. That's great, it's looking really good. It's looking very clean. We haven't got any errors that I can see. So now let's just make it sure that it recreates the board when we do have matches to begin with because you wouldn't want to be giving the person points just for starting the game. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back into my code here. So rather than just calling check board here, we'll put this into an if statement. And remember this turns returns a true or false. So because this is returning a true or false, for this to pass, it means that we already have matches here. So if we have matches, we'll say debug.log. We have matches, let's recreate the board. And then we'll just initialize board again. So we'll call the same function again, and it will basically just keep calling itself until it doesn't have a check in the board. And then we can just put an else statement here to just say debug.log just to make sure it's working. There are no matches. It's time to start the game. And jump back in, let's make sure that works. And we're checking the board, we have matches. We have matches, so let's recreate the board. We check the board, there are no matches, time to start the game. And we do not have any matches from what I can see. So that's looking really good. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. I will see you guys next week when we handle swapping potions around. As always, I'd like to give a shout out to the Patreons which make these videos possible. In the Emerald tier, we have Pat. In the Gold tier, we have Raphael. Silver tier, we have Lanky Moose, Castle Coders, Zope, and any star above. Thanks guys. If you'd like to support me, it's patreon.com slash I'll see you guys next week.